there are two styles, two styles of life insurance. Two styles of life insurance, one you rent and one you own. Let's talk about the one you rent, which is called temporary. Life insurance is temporary in these styles. Term insurance for a certain term, 10 year term, 20 year term, 30 year term. Cheap premium, large death benefit. That's one that a lot of people commonly see. I'm gonna get the least amount of life insurance, I'm sorry, the least amount of premium for the maximum amount of life insurance. And that's their policy, right? Another style, return of premium. So if nothing happens to you, keep the policy, pop, 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 you pay monthly premium, monthly premium. You, you have, let's say, a $100,000 policy, a $500,000 policy. You put 25 bucks into it, 50 bucks into it. Nothing happens to you. You pay a little bit more for this style, though. Nothing happens to you. Guess what? You get all your money back. R-O-P, return of premium. You know, so, so if you are either holding a policy or thinking about purchasing a policy, ask your agent. Do I have one of these two styles? Because I'll tell you this, a lot of agents don't offer the second one. I don't know why. They just offer the first one. Third one, group life. Where do you get group life term insurance policy? Through your job. So people say, oh, I got enough insurance. Where? Through my job. I remember I was in the Marine Corps. I mentioned the last, uh, the last episode that the, 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 the Marines uh, uh, brought us down, down to the ship's library to sign our wills and trusts and to sign for SGLI insurance, Servicemen's Group Life Insurance. We pay like 15 to 20 bucks a month for it, $250,000 life insurance. But as soon as, I, as soon as I left the military, as soon as I left the Marine Corps, as soon as I left my employer, guess what happened to that group policy? Uh, since I'm no longer part of that group, that policy terminated. It, it converted into VGLI, Veterans Group Life Insurance, and guess what happened to my premium since I'm no longer part of the group? Boom! I remember the staff sergeant, he was doing the numbers, he was calculating, he was calculating, if I want to keep my life insurance policy that I paid on through the military and convert it to a, F, a, a, a VGLI, Veterans Group Life Insurance, he was doing the math. <laughs> I remember him talking, his French guy, French accent, he was part of our flight equipment, he would issue us our helmets and, uh, and, our, and, our, and our vests in case, you know, we were to crash at sea and the, the, the vest would inflate. Anyway, that's what his job, his, his job of flight equipment. And he was doing the math, he said, hey, uh, excuse me, you're telling me, because it's our transition class, to get out of the military, it's called the TAPS class. All the veterans watching this, have you been through TAPS class? By the way, for all the veterans watching this, what education do they teach you about money when you leave the military? Do they give you a class when you're leaving the military or do they give you a class in boot camp? I'm interested in what you guys got to say because I got my class about finances, about financial planning and insurance when I was leaving the Marine Corps. I should have got that education at the beginning of my career. Anyway, I'm glad what you guys put, put in the comment section below. For any military guys, veterans uh, uh, watching this video. Anyway, they're filling out our forms. He goes, uh, excuse me, pretty soon if I stay with this VGLI, I'm probably going to pay $250,000 just to get $250,000. Doesn't make sense. So it made sense for him to get his own policy outside the group and get himself a, pro a policy privately between him and the insurance company. Not him, the employer, and the insurance company. No, it's between him, the individual, with directly through the insurance company, most likely through an agent, okay? And by the way, you think you can find an agent these days? The sad, here's a sad reality. A lot of insurance agents today, sad part about it, are no longer entering the field. A lot of insurance agents today are no longer entering this industry. It's even more importantly, not a lot of life insurance agents today are gonna to be aware of some of the things I'm gonna share with you in this video because they're not getting trained the right way. There's no, no such, very rare are agents getting professional training in life insurance strategies. They say, okay, let me get you a quote, let me get you on the phone, let me get you a quote, blah, 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 blah. But they don't have a financial use or a financial planning use of how to use life insurance to actually create and build and grow in a state. And I'm glad that you're watching this video. Okay? Uh, so let's go for to the next style. So if you say, Matt, I don't want to rent, I, I want to own. Okay, let's talk about the styles that you own. So here's the styles that you own. It's called permanent policies. You know, oftentimes people get caught up in calling it permanent policies whole life. No, no, no. There's more than just whole life. But the first style of life insurance had been whole life. Okay? Uh, uh, back, back, in, uh, back in the early 1800s, the first style of life insurance policies were actually created by Presbyterian pastors. The, 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 the ministries would go over and they started insuring pastors coming over from overseas. The first style of life insurance was right here. Right? To bring pastors, the Presbyterian life, to bring pastors over here safely. If they didn't come over here and save pastors, boom, they pay a benefit to the church. 
Now, the next style of life insurance, outside of whole life, then became universal. Why? Because whole life was fixed premium, uh, uh, fixed premium, fixed cost, basically, on a monthly basis or any basis, however you decide to pay insurance, and then fixed death benefit. It was very rigid, can skip. You, right away, if you skip the premium payment, a monthly, uh, a monthly premium payment, you go into a grace period. So whole life was very rigid. Whole life would pay dividends. It would, uh, so in other words, dividends weren't dividends in, a, in nature. Ralph Nader discovered that dividends, said dividends in the nature of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds weren't, an, weren't actually dividends. Dividends were just simply an, uh, just a refund of overpayment of premiums. And as insurance companies would actually pay those dividends to the policyholders inside their policies. They call them dividends. Even though you overpay the policy per, per the cost of the insurance, boom. And they call those dividends. It's a 1980 study by Ralph Nader. And the reason why a lot of people didn't like it is because it's rigid. And there's a lot of crusades where people say, man, this is such trash value. Well, for some of them, they're right. Why? Because the premium was higher because the premium would be less in the death benefit but add cash value to the policy. And so there's a school of agents in the marketplace that said this is trash value because for the same cost, right, even though you don't have any cash value, you can get a higher death benefit policy with the same amount of cost and the difference in terms of the cost of insurance, the difference you can invest inside that mutual funds. The strategy was called buy term and invest the difference. Why should you put your money inside trash value? But here's what people discovered. A lot of people discovered the, the invest the difference part, they didn't do. They bought the term insurance, but they didn't invest the difference. Actually, they spent the difference. You know why? Because lack of financial discipline into a lot of people. That if you weren't forced to save money, you wouldn't do it. That's why a lot of people have more money saved today in their 401k plans than they do in their own personal savings. You know why? Because 401k plans just take it out of your paycheck and they put it into an account that you can't touch until you're technically 59 and a half years old. It's called forced savings, 401k plans. Same thing too with pensions. They take your pension, your, 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 your check, your, uh, your, your pension dues, and they put it inside a, a defined, uh, defined benefit plan. All right? And they define that at the age that you retire, you're going to get X amount of dollars per month. But a lot of pension plans have been going away. So pension plans have been going away. 401k plans are, are not used the right way. Guess what? Everybody then putting money inside 401k with an uneducated uh, uh, knowledge and understanding of how this money actually grows. Same thing too happens with life insurance. Let me ask you a question. For those of you who have 401k plans, when was the last time HR actually sat down with you and strategized with you how to put your money inside 401k plans. They probably did it, right? And by the way, why would the HR people do it? They're HR people, they're not financial people. So why would the HR people, it, why would the HR folks, matter of fact, the better HR says, well, I can't advise you on what to do with your 401k plan, talk to a person that helps you with these 401ks. Boom, that's actually the right answer. But a lot, a lot of people are depending upon their HR to give them financial guidance on what to contribute to their 401k plan. Anyway, back to life insurance. Other styles of life insurance came around, whole life. And then another advent came around called universal life. Why was universal life different? Because flexible premium. I can pay 200 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month, back up to 200 bucks a month. Flexible premium, you didn't get caught. You weren't as rigid as the whole life policy. Same thing too with the death benefit. The death benefit was flexible. Flexible premium, flexible death benefit. It's called universal. Why? Because they wanted you to keep it for the rest of your life. They wanted you to keep it permanently. And then in the, in the uh, Late 80s, early 90s, they created something called variable universal life. Actually, it was variable whole life, and then variable universal life, which basically meant variable meant tied to the stock market. So your cash value, your cash that's inside this policy, even though this didn't have any cash value, term, because you're renting it, there is no cash value inside these styles because the premium's a little higher. The cash value starts to grow, not based on the dividends, not based on the creating rates of a universal life policy, but based on the Stock market performs of what they call the sub-accounts. And these sub-accounts would up, down, up, down. The danger to this is what happens the economy kept dropping and dropping. Well, you potentially could implode your life insurance policy. It's a very risky type of style of policy. And then they created a hybrid of the universal, and they created a hybrid of the, in terms of flexibility, hybrid of the variable, it means attached somewhat to the stock market. They created an index policy where clients were directly putting money into the index, or like the S&P 500, but they're using a pass-through called an insurance company, and the insurance company would put money directly into the stock market through the uh, chief investment officer of that insurance company, and they created something called the index, which would tie normally to an S&P 500 type of index, which a lot of people 
would grow their money in the gains only of the stock market, but none of the losses. So in other words, so in an indexed life insurance policy, you can grow when the market grows and lock it in. It's called the annual lock in and reset. And when the market drops, if the market drops, you, you experience none of the drops. You experience the drops here, the variable, but you don't experience that drops inside the index. Does that make sense? So here, another style is what they call joint survivorship, joint policy or survivorship policy. And that means if two people are on this policy jointly, the only time the policy pays out a death benefit is both people sadly were to pass away. And then the policy pays out. It's called a joint policy or a survivorship style of life insurance policy. And so people often say, you know, life insurance is getting caught more costly and costly. Life insurance costs more money. Listen, I've been around for a minute where I've been with three different costs of insurance. In other words, insurance companies have a standard table per age and gender and cost per thousand dollars of life insurance. It's called, a, it's called a CSO table, Commission Standard Ordinary. That's what it stands for. When I entered the insurance industry, they started off with the 1980. When I started off with the insurance industry, I started off with the 1980 table, and the policies would issue and stay around permanently until you're 90 to 100 years old. Okay, and then they issued the 2000 and, uh, 2001 tables. People start issuing policies. The, the insurance company would start issuing policies to 100, 110 years old. And now the policies of today, they're issued to 120, some even 130 years old. So what does that mean for you? People today are living longer due to modern medicine and, and consciousness of health. People are living longer. I mean, there's a World War II veteran that I think is 110, 111 years old. So people today are living longer, and here's the thing, if people are living longer, guess what these insurance companies are doing? They're not paying out claims and benefits because they're able to keep these premiums, and what do you think these insurance companies do with these premiums? They invest it. They invest it in the stock market, they invest it in uh, 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 investment grade bonds, they invest it in real estate, commercial real estate, they invest it out in loans, they invest it out in loans. So if they can keep your money longer invested, and they're earning more interest rate on it, and people aren't dying sooner than later, guess what happens over time over the insurance uh, premiums? They're actually getting cheaper. And I think insurance companies today, their premiums are so cheap, like daring to have you buy life insurance. And let me repeat that one more time. The insurance premiums today are so cheap I think these insurance companies are daring you to buy life insurance and actually take care of your family the right way and building your house on solid financial ground. So let me give you some case studies. Let me give you some case studies, okay? So if you don't think people are using life insurance to help them shelter and build millions and millions of dollars, let's take a look at Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh was, was drafted here by the Chicago Bears. Went out to play for the uh, 49ers and went to, I'm sorry, went to go play on for the Indianapolis Colts. Was a head coach at Stanford and a head coach at 49ers. And today he's a head coach of uh, the, uh, the Wolverines at Michigan, University of Michigan. Well, he said, listen, part of my compensation plan, I want you to stuff a lot of my money inside a permanent life insurance policy. So there's a retention, uh, there's a desire for him to stay there longer because they're not just paying him just salary. This, listen, we're paying, paying this over a period of years. There's, so there's a benefit for him to want to stay there long term. If he doesn't stay there long term, the university doesn't pay his life insurance premiums, I believe at two million, I believe the article said here, at uh, uh, two million dollars for the following five years to pay the premium on insurance policy. So oftentimes people are so miseducated, oh my gosh, you're paying so much money for life insurance. No, 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 no. They're not paying for the standard temporary renting insurance. There's a financial strategy behind life insurance, more than just dying. He's buying it for the living. It's not just, it, so what he plans to, like when he's done coaching, guess where he's gonna take his retirement money from? A combination of his 401k plan, other retirement accounts, Social Security, and guess what? Money inside is life insurance policy. If you don't think that was, uh, that was smart, look at, look at how all these smart people uh, handle their finances. This is 3M. This is the executives of 3M. This is, what they co this is how they compensate their executives. So we got here uh, 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 Michael, Joaquin, Julie, Ashish, Nicholas, Ayn, Ng, uh, Thulin, I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing it the wrong way, and Michael F. Roman. The, they, these are executives that are contributing 4,500 bucks to the 401k plan. You think to myself, wait a minute, you contribute 21, 22,000 dollars to a 401k plan. Why are you only putting 4,500 dollars to your 3M 401k plan? You know what I'm thinking? I, I think that's probably the match. I think they're just contributing to their 401k plan up to the match and they're redirecting their money to this other strategy called, hmm, it says VIP, excess company contributions, and hmm, executive life insurance. So they're stuffing a lot of money inside executive life insurance. So why are they putting $23,000 to an insurance policy? Why are they putting $11,000, $12,000, $8,000, $15,000 of 
money inside of life insurance respectively. It's not to get this cheap temporary policy. This executive life insurance is, is going to grow value over a period of time of which you can access in a very tax advantage basis. Let's take a look, let's take a look at a proxy statement here of, uh, of GE. The proxy statements here, uh, page, uh, was it 79 here? This is the top execs also of GE. They're putting money inside the retirement plan. They're putting collectively 9450 for each one of these executives into the retirement plan, right? But if you look to the left column, they're putting life insurance premiums of $172,000, $107,000, $62,000, $226,000, $227,000, $136,000 a year into their life insurance policies. So it doesn't mean it's this cheap term. So if anybody's advising you, oh my gosh, your life insurance policy is so expensive. No, go back to this. Life insurance policies are standardized in terms of their cost of insurance. Different insurance companies have different premiums, of course, but relatively speaking, all of them use the CSO table for gender, uh, uh, age, uh, and also for uh, cost per thousand dollars of life insurance. 